So I'm going to hand you back to the amazing Ben and Ali to bring us home with the final phase. Thank you, sir. So, as Graham says, this is going to be the final phase of Genesis, and it's called Nature's Wrath. And, and this is where we're going to bring the very planet itself to life. So, first off, let's start talking clouds. So, clouds have got an atmosphere, have got to be one of my favorite visual features of our game, and they're truly awesome, but they're also completely static. Nothing has changed with them. So, what we want to bring with Genesis is the evolution of clouds over time. But this isn't just some simple scrolling animation. We use the same physical data sets that drove the biomes we talked about earlier and Star Architect. And these are also now driving a physical simulation of the clouds so they can form and dissipate in realistic conditions. So this means things like the oceans, the prevailing winds, mountain ranges, and the temperature will all impact the clouds. But to complement these more dynamic clouds, we've also improved our lighting model. So it now correctly accounts for how light scatters multiple times inside a cloud. And this is important, creates much deeper lighting, and it can contrast against the sun's rays, resulting in much more vivid cloudscapes like we see on the left here, something we're all too familiar with in Manchester. Now, it would be awesome to bring this into context and show it on an actual location. Let's take a look at a quick scene to round this up. It's a nice day on the surface, but something's different. The clouds are moving, but they're not just moving. They're forming naturally in changing shape. They dissipate as they glide on the atmosphere based on wind data, stratus and cumulus alike. Now we start seeing the new cloud shading model come into play. We are seeing enhanced occlusion beneath the cover emphasizing the sunbeams out and interact with the clouds and seeing the light shafts peer through the layers. Now, as this is closing in, we can start to see the changes in visibility of the area. Light precipitation is starting. Previously, we authored static cloud shapes, but no longer. We didn't manually place a volume here. Its presence has been informed by Genesis data. Oh, and it's not just a cloud volume. It's a weather front. Now we're trying to see the wind picking up. Terrain and rocks are getting wet. Vegetation, grass, and the overall environment are responding to the weather. The system is changing the world around us. We can see puddles being formed dynamically in the dirt, properly responding to light, reflections, and rain droplets making it getting, it's getting really ominous and loud in here. I can feel the danger. I think we should let this play out in the game. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow! <laughs> wow! Man, that's what we call the Falco maneuver to get out of there. Ali, please break this down for us. What did we just see? Yeah, so that was a combination of lots of tech we just saw that all combined together to make a really great cohesive experience. So we started with the cloud simulation, which wasn't really a cloud simulation, it's a weather simulation. The rain will appear not at random, but it's based on physically plausible conditions. So you have real weather fronts evolving across your planet all the time. We have a host of visual effects, like the rain, and then you have the atmospheric scattering that you get under the columns of rain. We had the puddles and the splashes and the, all of this type of visual effects. We saw the wind developing over time, and that introduced turbulence to the flight model, making flight very challenging. And then, of course, we saw the lightning, which plays havoc with your instrumentation, but if direct strikes will damage your ship, and, of course, direct, uh, some storms will be dangerous enough to be fatal, as Ben's unlucky Aurora just found out. And these storms will sometimes be short-lived and localized, but others will be larger and potentially permanent on some planets. And this is going to restrict access via flight. I mean, players will be forced to resort to ground vehicles or even foot. And this is all going to be dynamic, meaning that you might find yourself trapped in some really unexpected situations. So we really can't wait to use all these mechanics to open up many new gameplay opportunities for all in the verse soon. A wise yogi once said, it's your job as a pilot to compensate and stay on course. Mm -hmm. All right, what have we learned today, guys? We've shown you an approach to, of encoding the rules of nature into planetary data. We've seen biomes emerge from geology, temperature, humidity, climate, weather, the physical terrain. We create denser, more diverse living planets without artists hand-placing or manu manually creating biomes, instead leveraging asset mapping. We've shown you a new way to make the game that can scale to create thousands of Korean plant places for civilizations on planets that can be used for missions or immersion gameplay without art and design hand-placing locations, leveraging world design rules instead. We've seen how populations of AI and NPCs inhabiting locations dynamically adapt their understanding of the environment without custom markup by developers, allowing the creation of more playable spaces rapidly. We've shown you how light and sound also benefit from Genesis data to influence planetary environments, and we've shown how these, system, these systems come together when weather comes into an area, changing your gameplay experience significantly. Our goal with Genesis and all of its system is to create more worlds, better worlds, faster, by applying our tech wizardry and craftsmanship to build systems that respond to data. That's our Star Engine presentation for today, guys, for this year. Have a great CitizenCon. We'll see you on next time.